workout's done for the day. So, as I was saying, the uh, angelfish that's got his fins eaten off, I had a feeling he wasn't going to make it. And I woke up this morning and man down, girl down. I'm not sure if that was a female or male, but uh, my last original tank member from, if any of you have seen my video where I set this tank up, I, I hand built this canopy up on top here. And uh, I have a video on my YouTube channel. I think it's in like other videos or something. It's in one of the playlists. And uh, it's just kind of like fast forward of me kind of building this and explaining a little bit how I, I built this. It's a, a bowed, bowed canopy. It's a 46 or a, yeah, 46 gallon bow front tank. And um, there's nobody makes canopies for it. So it looked retarded with all my automatic feeders and the, and the LED lights and everything up on top. So I built this custom canopy. And uh, so I have a video of me showing how to do that and everything. And you can see me taking my original fish that were in the, the little rectangle tank I had. It was like the little tall square one or rectangly top one. And um, hey, don't eat, don't eat mommy's shoes. No, you busted buddy, busted. You don't eat these, no. Don't eat shoes, boy. Busted. So, uh, you'll see that I had the angel fish in there. One of them died a few days ago because I got these cichlids and I returned the one to the store. I think I'm gonna have to return the other two because now the other female is kind of being a bitch in the tank. Not as bad as the other one was, but um, I don't think they're very good. They're electric yellow cichlids. They're supposed to be the most tame of the cichlid family. And these ones are just, well, the the, fe the male's all right. He's just kind of hiding in the corner all the time. Look at this. See, now this one's digging up holes. He's just chilling, hiding all the time. Now this one's being a bitch. So I don't know, I might return them. I'm just gonna get all community fish. I wanna get some ghost knife fish. Again, they're really cool. Anyway, my workout's done. Today we did chest and triceps. We did, um, we did some incline dumbbell, uh, uh, incline dumbbell presses and uh, I tried to go with 40 pound dumbbells I'm trying to lift heavier I went for 40s and failed so I did 35s and I was able to complete eight reps for four sets um, on the last set I failed it I got seven and then I failed halfway up to eight I couldn't quite get there so pretty good um, my weights are increasing for all my exercises so we did that, then we moved to, um, oh, let me think, what did we do next? We did, uh, yeah, so we started out with, what did we start out with? I started out with, um, yeah, incline, incline dumbbell press, then we went to dumbbell flies again. Uh, that was for three sets, and I did uh, 20 pounds, then I went to 22.5, then I went up to 25s. I completed the uh, three sets of eight reps. Then we did uh, low cable crossovers. I used the bands for that because I don't have a cable machine. So I used the bands and that, that worked pretty well. And then uh, we had dips. I just got this dip thing. Well, I've had it for a little bit, but I just put it together. Got it out of the box, put it together, and uh, I've got some other things kind of in the way here that I need to, this is my preacher curl bar, not bar, preacher curl, uh, Rest dealy. Pick that back here. So I've got this bench in the way. Uh, get me in tank. This guy now, which is great. It's a really nice machine. It's pretty simple, but uh, it's great for doing dips. And uh, so you can work your upper chest and your triceps with dips and your shoulders. It kind of works all of that. Uh, but it's great for triceps. And then uh, we went to decline tricep extensions, skull crushers, lying tricep extensions. There's uh, many ways, things you can call it. And, uh, but we did it with dumbbells this time. We didn't do the easy bar curl. We did uh, dumbbells and that was basically four sets uh, until failure. And then we went to the uh, tricep rope push down. And I did that, a hundred reps of that with uh, sets in between or breaks in between as needed, as many sets as possible, or as many sets as needed 
uh, to get to 100 reps. And that's how I finished my workout. And it was a good one. So now I gotta get this dead fish out of my tank. And then uh, Jinx is coming over. We're gonna be doing some guitar stuff today. Firing up the old the Marshall JVM. Got some sick guitar tones yesterday. I was working on some stuff. We're just uh, jamming some music, just working on some things. And uh, yeah, so we're, uh, I'm firing this bad boy up. I know a lot of you guys ask me what my settings are and stuff, but uh, I, to be honest, um, it, it's a lot more than just what your amp settings are on your amp. Like if you have a little 15 watt Fender practice amp and you have the same settings that I have on my Marshall head here, it's not gonna sound the same. There's a lot of things that go into it, like having a tube head. This is a tube amplifier. It's a big difference from a solid state amplifier. Give your guitar tone warmth and gain and, and uh, make it sound awesome. Now, having a great head is one thing. Then it's all about the guitar. You've got to have a good guitar. You've got to have good pickups. If you have a shitty guitar with crappy pickups, it's not, it's not going to sound good. You could you could literally have every piece of gear that's awesome, and then you have a crappy guitar. It's going to sound like crap. Um, so have a nice guitar. Have nice pickups in it. I love EMG. I'm also jamming these Fishman pickups that are really awesome. Um, I've always been an EMG guy though. I use a uh, in, in my Schecter here, I have EMG 81s in both the bridge and neck. I customly put those in like that. I like the 81 in the neck as well. Um, you, typically you go 81, 85, and I have that set up in a lot of my, my stage guitars, but I don't know what it is about the 81. I, I like that in the neck too. It, it makes it so it's not too bluesy and kind of sounding, you know, the neck pickup definitely gives you a bluesy, liquidy sound, and I love the neck pickup for sweeping and fast solos and shredding like that. It, it gives you a nice smooth sound instead of the harsh tone of the the bridge pickup that you use on, you know, all the rhythms and riffs and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of solos, I mean, I'll use the bridge too on solos, but I like to use uh, the neck pickup on super fast stuff and sweeps and all that. That's how you get that fluid, nice sound. Uh, and so that, that's a big thing. Uh, this is a big one that I think a lot of people overlook is fresh strings. You've got to have fresh strings on your guitar. If you have a month old set of strings that are starting to rust and corrode and you're wondering why you're getting bad tone, that's exactly why. Change your strings, get a new set. It's important. You'll notice right away how much brighter and clearer your tone will be. So new strings are key. If you're ever recording, you people out there in bands, uh, whether you're a big band or a little band, if you're recording anything, put new strings on your guitar. It'll make a huge difference. It will make your tone that much better. Another thing is cables. Have nice cables. I use Planet Waves. Um, nice cables like this. Um, let's see. I've got these guys. These are cool Planet Waves cables. They've got like a little stop switch here. Then I've just got the standard ones here too. I'm, I'm running this one in the Marshall, just a standard Planet Waves instrument cable. I use the same thing for speaker cables, Planet Waves speaker cables. Um, okay, now let's talk about guitar cabinet. Speaker choice, holy crap. So many people overlook guitar cabinets and just think, oh, any old speaker will do. Hell no. If you're a metal player and you want a great metal tone, I'm going to tell you, I have been a fan and I'll always stick by and always choose the Celestion Vintage 30 speaker over any guitar cabinet speaker on the market. There's a lot of them. Um, I'm a huge V30s guy, so all my guitar cabs have Vintage 30 speakers in it. I've got this Marshall cabinet. It's the 1960 Vintage. So super nice cab. It sounds fucking incredible. It's got Vintage 30 speakers in it. Now I've also got two Mesa Boogie cabs, the rectifier cabs, which we used for recording the last record. We used a Marshall cab as well. We had three guitar cabinets set up and we were blending three heads at a time, but I used, uh, they've got the covers on them, but they're, uh, they're just the standard straight Mesa Boogie uh, rectifier cabs with vintage 30 speakers in them. And it just sounds beefy and monstrous. Um, I have to say, I prefer Mesa Boogie cabs and Marshall cabs over anything. They both sound great. They have a little bit different sound, but, um, and it, it, it's kind of fun to use the same head, like say a Marshall, I mean, a Marshall to a Marshall is going to sound the best, clearly. Uh, that's why, you know, they were made for each other. But like, 
uh, running different heads like, uh, say, a PV or an angle or my... Uh, the, the Mesa Boogie, of course, my Mesa Road King sounded best through the Mesa cabs. Um, here's an example. We ran a Bogner Ubershaw through a Mesa cab, and it sounded great. And then we ran it through a, a Marshall Vintage cab, and we liked it better. So we ran that route. So that's an example of like an, uh, a different head. Bogner makes, you know, uh, cabinets as well, but it sounded great through uh, the Marshall. So Bogner is almost like a hot... Uh, Bogner Ubershaw is kind of like a... A super hot rotted JCM 800 kind of uh, would be my my take on it, and they sound great. Bogner's great. I'm really stoked on this JVM though. I've got some incredible guitar tone coming out of this thing. It just sounds. The thing I love about Marshall guitar heads are they give you this clarity in your like note definition in your strings where uh, it's almost like you can hear the the metal grind of the string vibrating. It's I don't know what it is. It's like a lot of guitar amps will give you some great distortion and whatnot, but it's kind of like fuzzy sounding and it's just kind of like, a wish, I don't know, wishy-washy, great tone, but uh, these Marshall amps, I've got this tone right now going through it that it just sounds like you can hear, it's like you can, when you hear it, you can see the string vibrating, like it's that heavy sounding and it's just that clear and that the note definition's insane. Um, it's got a really awesome sound about it. I love this JVM. Uh, right now, I think it's probably my favorite amp that I have. Um, I love it. It just sounds so rad. I'm, I'm loving it so much. And uh, let's see. So yeah, so your speaker choice. Vintage 30s, you gotta have a great cabinet. Um, and I know not, not everyone can afford all this kind of stuff. And so there's ways to make, uh, you know, not so great gear sound better than than uh, what it could be, and there's and there's things like this. So, after if you do have like great gear like this, and you have all this stuff, then you're on to the next big challenge. Um, you want to have a good microphone, a great preamp, and the right mic placement. You want to have your guitar cabinet in a nice room. Um, you don't want to put it in a little closet. You're going to get boxy tone. It's going to, you know, you want to have it in a big open room. That's the main thing. Um, you can get away with stuff like ISO cabs. I've got this ISO cab over here. That's a pressure relieved ISO cab. Um, and it, it's all right. It's got a vintage 30 in that too. But uh, the, the most simple thing to do is get a Shure SM57. Uh, it's a $100 microphone. And... You'll want to, if you're a metal guitar player, I mean, it's all preference, it's up to you. Um, I like to put the microphone right up against the grill and then I'm going to move it slightly off the cone. So it's just off, just off the cone just a little bit. And the best thing you can do is you want to, you want to obviously, it helps if you have two people. So one person will go to the microphone, the other person's in the control room or whatever, wherever your speakers are. and have someone playing the guitar and then you have someone moving the microphone around because every speaker's got a sweet spot. So you're gonna move it around until you find that sweet spot and go back. This is what we did for each microphone placed on the cabs when we recorded our record. We had Bob in the, uh, in the live room and me and Eric were in the control room and I would play guitar and we'd listen and he would take, we, we had three mics on each cab. We had three cabs, three mics on each cab and there were different microphones obviously. We had a uh, three different types of microphones on each cab. So each microphone, we'd move it around until, yep, that's the spot, right? Nope, go back, right there, okay. Next microphone, same thing for each microphone through each cab until we got the sound. Then we blended them all and it sounds massive. Now, um, okay, so say you've got, what are these dogs doing? Hang on. Guys, what are you doing? Stop it, stop, stop barking, stop it. Chill. Chill out. Okay, so. Next. Great preamp. Um, great preamps like Neves, uh, APIs, Universal Audio. Oh my god. Alright. Dogs are barking like a motherfucker. So. Great preamps. That's a big thing. Preamps are expensive. Nice ones. So, um, typically what I'm using is just my preamps and my, I have a, for my interface, I'm running a Universal Audio Apollo Quad. 
It's this guy right here. This guy. It's a, a rad interface. I love it. It's all Thunderbolt, so it's super fast. Uh, literally near zero latency. Uh, you can't even detect the latency. Uh, it's that, that awesome. Um, and that it, it sounds great you know it sounds it sounds awesome um apogee makes great preamps as well you can get like uh the little quartets i think that's apogee um universal audio makes a uh a smaller version of the apollo now they've got like the little it's a, a dual input one uh i think it goes for like 800 bucks or something but anything like that a, a great interface is key that has great preamps in it even honestly Something like this, a little Focusrite, uh, Scarlet 2. This is what I use when I'm, I take that with me on the road because it's tiny and I can just stick it in my backpack and set it up in the dressing room. So I'll use that when I'm just tracking ideas and whatnot, like on the road. And honestly, it doesn't sound terrible. Um, you can get pretty good tone with that. But if you're looking for a pro recording, don't use that. You want to use something a little bit nicer than that. Okay, so... Say you don't have all of that kind of stuff. Well, if you're gonna record guitars, you obviously need an interface. So say you only have the focus right. Um, something that's gonna help you get great guitar tone without, okay, you don't have the microphones, you don't have a great cab with V30s in it, and say you don't even have the nicest tube head. Say you've got like a, a Marshall G100R. I've actually got one back here in this closet. It's a $100 head I paid for it on Craigslist. Um, I thought it would be fun to get one just because it, you know, I like to test out uh, amps and get tones out of smaller amps. So I'm not all about just running the great expensive tube heads. I do have some cheaper ones that I like to mess around with and uh, see how great I can get them to sound. So maybe I'll try to make some videos using that, getting guitar tone, showing you guys. Oh. So maybe I will make a video showing how to get some great guitar tone with a cheaper amp and with certain gear like, um, Let's see, for example, you can use, uh, you can run heads into, you have to have a load box. If you're gonna run a head not into a speaker cab, you need to have a load box. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either get a load box, like uh, I have this thing called a, a Two Notes Torpedo Live. I have a video kind of demoing in that on my channel. Um, this guy, it's basically a load box for, uh, two, for amps. So it can take the load that normally the speaker cab would take so you don't blow your amp up because you don't want to have your head running if it's not plugged into a speaker cab or you'll blow it up and ruin it and you don't want to do that so this basically the load box takes the load and so you don't have to have it plugged into a speaker cab and then it simulates guitar cabinets microphones microphone placements um, all kinds of stuff it's pretty pretty awesome it sounds rad check out my video i did a demo of that um, with a 6505 and then um, another way you can do it is using impulse responses. Uh, a lot of people, like Joey Sturgis, uh, you know, sells impulse response packs where it's basically like uh, the Kemper profiling amp, say, profiles guitar amps and the whole setup and everything. Well, impulse responses are basically simulated, you know, guitar cabs and frequencies that get captured and, and copy that guitar cabinet and what that guitar cabinet sounds like. So in my Kemper, I can actually go in with the guitar amp and switch the guitar cabinets out with different impulse responses and uh, see what it sounds like through a Mesa cab, see what it sounds like through a Marshall cab. Of course, it's not the actual physical thing, but it's been profiled like that. So that's another way to do it. If, you do, if you're doing it like that, you, do, you can uh, generally run an out from your head into your interface, but you will still need to run a speaker cable out of your head into a guitar cabinet that is somewhere taking the load. Otherwise, again, you will blow your head up. So your guitar head has to have, the, the speaker jack needs to be plugged into either a guitar cabinet or into a load box. Um, so those are a couple things about guitar tone and kind of what you need to get pro guitar sounds. So I'll, I'll try to make some videos here coming up when I get a sec of just kind of making some, I, I think the next video I'll do is a uh, like studio gear demos. I'll do a demo because I know not everyone out there has the same gear that I have. I'm not saying I have the best stuff, but I've got some pretty decent stuff here, you know, and um, uh, I'll get the, the cheaper Marshall head out and hook that bad boy up. And let's say we'll try it in the, the Torpedo Live. We'll go a route of Say we're not going to mic it up. Again, for someone who isn't really great with micing up guitar cabinets and you struggle with getting sound that way, um, 
there's there's definitely technology and things available nowadays that you can get great sounds with. And if you don't have any of this stuff, you can always rely on plugins. Now, I don't like to use plugins, amp sims like Pod Farm or um, Guitar Rig or any of that stuff. It doesn't sound bad. You can get some pretty sick guitar tones with it. Um, but it just, I don't know, it doesn't have that tube sound. You don't have, it's not the same thing as the real thing. And I think uh, amp sim plugins are the farthest thing nowadays from getting awesome guitar tone. When it, I mean, you can get better guitar tone a lot of the time with that than you know trying to set up your rig depending on what, what gear you're using. But if you have the right gear and you know what you're doing, you can get some sick guitar tones pretty easily at home. Um, and then it always comes down to uh, the, the post-production too. You know, um, you have to know how to mix your guitar tone and EQ it properly to sit in a mix. Um, so there's a whole art to mixing and it's kind of like building a puzzle in sound frequencies. You have to know what frequency does what and, and you know, from your kick drum to your bass guitar to your guitar tone to your vocal to your, your, you know, your high end of cymbals and everything. You have to know where everything sits and what frequencies to cut out, what to boost a little bit. And that's a whole, a whole, art of learning that as well. I've been, you know, spending, you know, I've been running, working with Pro Tools, and when I first started using Pro Tools, you know, my, my mixing was changing volume faders and going, okay, I'm going to put this here and, and basically l making levels. And then I started to learn, okay, I need to adjust frequencies so things sit better together. And then there's a the whole compression and, and gluing everything together, gluing the mix together. And there's a lot that goes into mixing where you can take a pretty raw sounding recording and turn it into a very polished monster sounding track. So there's a lot that goes into recording and it takes years and years of just trial and error. Uh, the, the biggest thing, you know, you're not going to learn how to do it overnight. You have to exp like you have to press buttons. You have to turn knobs and see what things do. Turn it all the way up, turn it all the way down and then start to see what it does. And that's how I learned how to do everything I know how to do. I wasn't afraid to press a button and see what it did or turn a knob and see what it sounds like when I turn it. Um, that's the only way you'll learn. And that's the only way you got to be hands on with the stuff and you got to, you got to physically do it to see what it does and hear it and go, okay, so that's what that does. Compression, I will tell you is, uh, probably the trickiest thing to learn because at first you don't really, it's kind of, it's hard for your ear to understand what compression is doing and knowing when to compress things and when not to and uh, how to compress an overall mix, and uh, there's a, that's a, a whole art form in itself. So uh, I'm still, you know, getting better at it, you know, every day. So um, it's just, and there's new products and new things and new ways to do things coming out constantly. There's a billion different ways to do everything. So there's always something to learn in this industry and with the stuff, and it's fun. I'm a total gear nerd, and I love the stuff. So I love, I'll sit in here for hours just pressing buttons, turning knobs, just getting sounds. I, you know, I'll sitting here just getting the best guitar tone I possibly can and I'm not even recording anything I'm just getting guitar tone because it sounds awesome so anyway that's my two cents on guitar tone and whatnot so I'm gonna go ahead and stop yapping for now and go ahead and uh, get out of here and get on with my day so I'll see you guys in the next video later Hey guys, thanks for watching my video today. If you'd like to check out yesterday's vlog, go ahead and click right here on me and Ernie and it'll take you to the yesterdays. Uh, if you want to see a whole playlist and you're missing some vlogs or you've never even seen my vlogs, click on this playlist right here. It'll take you to a whole list of all my videos. Um, right below that you can check out my guitar lessons and below that I have my Get Mean Fitness channel. Go click on that. It's going to take you over to Get Mean Fitness. It's my fitness channel obviously and there's a bunch of cool stuff on there so go check that out. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and a like my videos. It helps me make more. And be sure to always click that subscribe button if you haven't yet. And you can be updated when I get new videos up. Which is most likely daily. If not, it'll be at least weekly for sure. What do you got to say, Mr. Bubs? Mm. <sighs>